Today we are going to be looking at grade 11 work life science, basically Tamon's work. That is biodiversity and the classification of microorganisms. We find out that um, many students, they try to uh, make this topic to be difficult, but it's not difficult as long as you know the basics of the topic. So keep in touch, you'll be able to get a distinction from our channel. Biodiversity, before I talk about anything, let me just try to clarify this. When you say biodiversity and the classification of microorganisms, what comes into your mind? Biodiversity and the classification of microorganisms. Bio means life. Diversity means uh, how different these lives are, where they are formed. So it means that you have different kinds of life in different areas. And then uh, classification, it means that you are categorizing these organisms. You are categorizing them. How diverse they are, how broad they are, that is biodiversity, their lives, how broad they are, and their classes, their groups, the different groups. But we are not looking at all the organisms, but we are looking at what you call the microorganisms, which in this case, we are looking at the organisms which you cannot see with your naked eyes. That's why I call them micro. So you can only see them using a microscope. Yes. Yeah. A, a machine or an instrument which is used to see organisms or things which are very, 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 very small. So organisms which are very small, you cannot see it with your naked eyes. So in this topic, you expect to see or to talk about the bacteria, talk about the virus, you talk about the fungi, you, the microorganisms, the organisms which you can see with your naked eyes. However, um, because we start from the simplest to a more advanced, so we will keep on advancing these organisms until we reach human beings. By the time you reach human beings, you'll be in grade 12. So in grade 11, we look at the simplest organisms until you reach the plants. All right. So this is grade 11 and MCID as usual, Sander Eduke, or any relative um, uh, channels. Don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any classes. You can join our classes so that you can, uh, just below you will see a link says join. Uh, there you will just pay a small amount, but you'll be helped one-on-one -on -one homework. If you have homework, you can send the homework. They can help you discuss it. They are preparing you for the exams, um, exams, um, and then also for tests. If you're going to write a test tomorrow, it can help you uh, to, to do that so that at least a distinction is secured. Our material is uh, there on our website, yes, but uh, the people who are already subscribed, they will have uh, better offers than the people who have not subscribed. I'm talking about the people who joined, yes. Subscription here, just to press um, uh, press the, the, the subscribe button is for free, so you can do it so that many people can get more uh, information about this. I've taken a lot of time when I'm trying to do a, a small introduction is because this is the first topic and you need to know exactly what's going to happen uh, on this channel. Let's go to the first subtopic, virus, bacteria, protista, fungi. These are different kingdoms we're going to look at viruses what are they we always talk about virus coronavirus hiv virus talk about virus what are they today we're going to look at them bacteria what are they are they important to our life or they're just negative we're going to see protista fungi some of these things we see them but we don't know that exactly they belong to protista or they belong to fungi all right virus this is a simple structure of a virus we look at it simple structure of virus. If you look at a virus, it has what you call an envelope. 
the envelope which uh, encloses everything. And this envelope sometimes has a protein. And then uh, it has what you call the uh, viral genome, which you call, it can be DNA or it can be RNA. It, it may not, it, the viruses don't have both. It might have DNA or it might have RNA. So in this case, we call it viral genome. It's a genetic composition. Then the envelope, which uh, encloses the, the genome, is called nucleocapsid. We don't call it nuclear membrane because it doesn't have a nucleus. Virus has no nucleus. Yes. And then we have uh, simple, simple attachments. Yes, which are encloses. So it means that if you look at it, the virus has no cytoplasm. We will look at it in detail. Then this is a bacteria. Also bacteria have different shapes, but this is the basic shape. Bacteria are a little bit bigger compared to virus. Actually, a virus is smaller than a bacteria, 50 times. Imagine you are bigger than someone or another animal 50 times. It means that that animal is too small. So viruses are very, 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 very small. Actually, the virus can enter the bacteria. We will see them. So we will see also the structure of a bacteria. Then we have the protists, uh, or kingdom protista. These ones, uh, most of them are free living. However, there are some who are causing diseases. An example, this is an example of a protista. Is Uglena, we call it Uglena. It's Uglena. So we're gonna look at it also in detail. Then look at uh, kingdom fungi or the fungi. Here is the bread mold. Bread mold, if you look at it, is a bread mold. That's not the only fungi we see. Mushrooms are also fungi. So it means that, however, some fungi could be bad to us, but some could be good to us because they can also act as food. We eat mushrooms from shop right and pick and pay. Yes. So uh, we're going to look at them also in detail. But this is a bread mold which we call the rhizopus. The science. So this is also an example of uh, a fungi. Now, it's grade 11 work. Let's start uh, our topic without wasting time. Biodiversity is basically all different kinds, all different. You see this is a marking point. I put it in different color is a marking point. All different kinds of lives found in one area. One area in this case could be the earth. So it could be small or it could be as big as the earth. For example, the wide variety of plants, how plants are different. If they will give you homework and ask you, go and count how many plants do you have in your area? How biodiverse those plants are in your area? It means that the different lives of those plants in your area, they, they are diverse. Those plants are diverse. All right, animals, just look at dogs in your area. How many kinds of dogs do you have in that area? Look at humans. Actually, you were born with your sisters and brothers, but you don't look exactly the same. That's how diverse you are. Different species, different organisms. So we don't only stop there. 
also talks about the microorganisms. All these organisms, they are found on the earth. So all different kinds of life found on the, uh, in one area. So if they ask you to define what is biodiversity, and if you stop where the color is stopping here, it's fine. This is just an explanation of that. They can be microorganisms. Micro means small. Yeah, this is supposed to be microorganisms. Macro, macro. Okay. So it must be macroorganisms, which means big. Yes. Or it could be microorganisms, which means small. Micro comes from the word small. Macro means big. Yes. Macroorganisms. You can see with naked eyes. Or you can't see with the naked eyes. Could be unicellular or multicellular. Uni means one. Unicellular. Uni one cellular, which comes from the word cell. Or multi, many. Cellular cells. So it, it could be many cells. For example, us, we are multicellular. We have billions of cells in our bodies. What about amoeba? What about the paramecium? What about the bacteria? What about, so those are one cell. But one cell, it forms a real organism. Some could be useful, this uh, organism, some of them could be useful, while others could be harmful. Not all, all organisms are useful to us, however much they are surrounding us. Some of them are useful, some of them are harmful. So if they're harmful, it means that in most cases, we can classify them as pathogens. They cause diseases to us because the only way they can be harmful to us is to bring about diseases. So they can be classified as pathogens. If they are uh, uh, useful, then it means that uh, they, 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 they are not pathogenic. Yes. Uh -huh. Let's look at the classification of these organisms. Look at, at the kingdoms. Let's look at kingdom monera. When you talk about kingdom monera, we are talking about the bacteria. We can bring in exam to which kingdom do bacteria belong? Planty, Animalia, Fungi, Protesta, Monera. Then you see someone saying Plante. Okay, kingdom is bacteria for bacteria is called Monera. Kingdom Protista, these are the protists. All these two, the two, they are single celled. Protista. Uglena, Amoeba, Paramecia. Hmm? So all these are single-celled organisms. So when they become single-celled before, it's the simplest, then you keep on developing. Yes. Then kingdom fungi, these are fungi. We, 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 we saw them. Some of them are single-celled, some of them multi-celled. Yes, multi-celled, yes. Kingdom plantae. Now these are plants. Sometimes fungi, they confuse students and they think that fungi is the same as plants. They look like a plant, but they are not plants. Sometimes kids, they think that mushroom is a plant. Mushroom is not a plant. What is the major difference between a fungi or fungi and the plant of plants. Plants are green in color. Fungi, they are not in green in color. Basically, plants, they can manufacture their own food. Therefore, they are autotrophs. Most fungi are heterotrophs. They feed on other organisms. 
in most cases they are decomposers they cause other organisms to decompose we look at it in detail kingdom animalia these are animals animals i hope students you understand what i'm saying animalia animals you have you can give examples of animals i should not even waste time how many kingdoms do we have based on grade 10 work you covered in this yes five kingdoms we have other classifications of these organisms but the major ones we look at are the five kingdoms monera protista fungi planti and animalia i hope you can repeat after me monera protista fungi planti and then animal. You should not forget this. Yes. Monera, those are the bacteria. Protista, those are the protists. We call them, the organisms are called the protists. I gave you examples. We're going to look at them. Fungi, the, the organisms are fungi and the kingdom is fungi or fungi. Plantae, those are the plants. Animalia, those are the animals. Let's look at viruses. Viruses. What are the viruses? Viruses. A virus, a virus, yes, viruses, or virus is an effective agent that typically consists of nucleic. You see this word nucleic? I explained it and I said that it could be DNA or it could be RNA but not both molecules in protein code it means that the dna or rna if this is the dna is surrounded with a protein code the surrounding is protein code and we saw it we said it's a capsid and is too small to be seen by light microscope so you can't see it in the this simple simple microscope and is able to multiply only within a living cell it cannot reproduce on its own it can only multiply in a living cell for example if hiv is outside your body it cannot multiply the moment is is in your body then it starts to multiply it can crystallize. It can sustain high temperatures. So it has unique characteristics which are different from other organisms. So these viruses, they can only, listen carefully, they can only multiply in living cells. They cannot survive outside the living cell. Therefore, we call them obligate. They are parasites because they feed on other organisms. They depend on other organisms. Therefore, they are parasites because they cannot survive without the host. Therefore, we call them obligate parasite. I'll explain it more when we continue. So that is a structure of the virus as we saw it at the beginning. Is a simple structure. Remember, different viruses have different shapes and have different genetic composition, which we call the viral genome. Either it could be DNA or it could be RNA. So virus is made up of DNA or an RNA. Inside a protein shell called capsid. Some viruses have an extra membrane which is called the envelope. Yes, I think now you see some viruses only have this, only that. But some viruses they have these envelopes, this envelope, and the others they have this so that it is easier for them to attach. Viruses have an external uh, membrane called what? Envelope. Yes. So 
if I don't have the envelope, does it mean that the virus can, can stay? What is important in the virus is the biogenome, and that's what it uses to multiply. Viruses are very diverse. We have a lot. Why is it very diverse? Because it can mutate at a very high speed. It can change itself. You hear Corona when you talk about or HIV when they talk about it. Now it has changed. Now there is a strain. When we talk about the strain, it means that it has changed the shape. HIV, we can have thousands of people, but each person has different kind of HIV is having. That's why they say that even if you are HIV positive, still use a condom. Why? So that you don't get the other one from the other person. However much both of them, both of you, you are HIV positive. His or her HIV might be more dangerous to you than the one you have. So they are very, 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 very diverse. So that is a virus. So what are virus? Are they living or they are non-living? Because they, the way they are now, we talked about that if they don't have a cytoplasm. What do they have? So here is an example of a virus. This is the influenza virus, the virus which causes flu. And then this is a, a bacteriophage. Why do you call it bacteriophage? It's because it's a virus which attacks bacteria. The virus are so, 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 so unique in such a way that the virus itself can attack another virus, which you call the Viral phage. So, a bacteriophage is a virus which attacks bacteria. It means that it can kill the bacteria. The virus is too small in such a way that it is, as I say, that it is 50 times smaller than the bacteria. Therefore, it can fit in the bacteria. It can instruct the bacteria to produce DNA of the virus. And then as it is living, it causes it to burst and then the bacteria dies. So these creatures are a little bit different from other creatures because they keep on changing all the time. Every after second, they are changing. They mutate. Their genetic composition is not stable. That's why there is no drug for viral diseases to chew it completely why because they keep what they keep changing and changing and changing okay bacteriophage is a virus which attacks the bacteria i explained this that this one attacks the bacteria and kills them Viruses are considered to be non-living. Why? Why are they considered? Do viruses live? Yes. Do viruses don't live? Yes. Okay. Do virus living organisms? Yes. Do virus non-living organisms? Yes. What are they now? They are living organisms. They are non-living organisms. Oh. Do virus living organisms? No. Do virus non-living organisms? No. What are they? They're just non-living, not non-living, because they have both characteristics of living and non-living. What are some of the characteristics of non-living organisms? They are non-cells. They are non-cells. Why do we say they are non-cells? Because they don't have a cytoplasm. They don't have cell organelles. They don't have a nucleus. They don't have the mitochondria. They don't have they don't have, they have nothing. They only have the genome, the genetic composition, either DNA or RNA. That's all. They do not grow. And they do not respond to their surrounding. No, they don't respond. So they are not living. If you, 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 it's like a bottle, you, 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 you touch it. It doesn't respond to the surrounding. Doesn't respond to your touch. What is it? It's a non-living. 
cannot make their own food, meaning that they cannot manufacture. Okay, it's fine. Even us, we can't make the, our own food. That's why we eat plants. But still, they don't feed. They don't feed. Then what is it? Doesn't make the, its own food. It does not produce waste. Here, for us, when we eat, we go to the toilet, we cook. We enjoy that. But here, viruses, they don't do that. They don't feed. They don't die. Because they have not fed. <laughs> they don't feed. They don't, they cannot make their own food. They don't produce wastes. You see, they are non-living. Viruses do not respond to stimulus. They don't respire. We need the energy. For them, they don't respire to, to have energy. Mm. But viruses still have living characteristics. They contain a protein coat called capsid. These proteins are found in organisms which are living. You can't find a protein in a, in a stone. You can't find a protein in a bottle. No. So they contain a protein called, called capsid. Uh, they have a nucleic core containing DNA or RNA, but not both. I explain this. One or other, but none, both. Either DNA or RNA. Yes, HIV, what, what does it have? Does it have DNA or RNA? Mm. Um, what? Capable of reproducing only when inside the host. They cannot reproduce on their own. They can only reproduce inside the host. Therefore, we call them obligate parasites. Please don't forget this because we like to ask you, ask you this. Parasites. Viruses are obligate parasites. Parasites which cannot live without a host. We call them obligate parasites. Yes. Look at the bacteria. Bacteria belong to Kingdom Monera. We saw it. They are found everywhere. Now think about anything, anywhere, anywhere you can think about. You'll find bacteria. Mouth, yes. Nose, yes. Stomach, yes. Everywhere. Everywhere. Some of them are useful where they are. Some of them, they can be problematic. So some are pathogenic. I said pathogens are organisms which cause diseases. So some are pathogenic. It means that they can cause diseases. They cause diseases like TB. And the others are useful. Yes. TB, mycobacterium tuberculosis. It's a bacteria which cause TB, tuberculosis. The bacteria is called mycobacterium tuberculosis. Yes, this is a simple structure of uh, a bacteria. If you look at it, at least it has this. It has DNA, it has a cytoplasm, it has organelles, see, a ribosome, of which virus do not have this, no cytoplasm, no ribosomes, only DNA. That's all. Has flagella, flagellum is used for locomotion. So bacteria can be autotrophic, meaning that they can manufacture their own food or heterotrophic, they feed on other organisms. Those which feed on other organisms, they cause those organisms to decay. Therefore, they are saprophytic, saprophytes, decomposition. They can live where they are in a mutualistic relationship, meaning that the bacteria benefits and where that bacteria is staying, that thing is also benefiting. For example, bacteria in the small intestine of the cows or the lum ruminants, 
the ruminants, they have the, the bacteria in small intestines. Yeah, the bacteria gets the shelter and also they help to do the decomposition so that the fermentation, so that the, the organism can benefit nutrients from it. So it lives in a mutualistic relationship. Bacteria in the vagina from there, they protect it from infections, but also, so the person is benefiting, but also the bacteria is getting the shelter and multiplied. Parasitic, these are parasites, bacteria which cause diseases now. You can talk about um, many bacteria, any bacteria. TB is an example of disease caused by bacteria. And then you have saprophytic. These are the decomposers. Yes, they decompose. When you die, you decay. What causes it to decay? The bacteria. They try to make the body decay so that yeah, it is important for the organism to decay. Imagine all the organisms on this earth didn't decompose. What could be the, 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 the results would have been like stones, piles and piles and heaps of dead bodies they would have accumulated. And then decomposition is also important and also important for nutrient recycling. When you die, you decay, your nutrients which are being used by you can be used by other organisms. Maybe the nutrients you have that have been used up by millions of organisms before. You are not the first one to use the nutrients you have. No. Because we don't have new things being formed. We are just recycling. Bacteria produce reproduce very rapidly by binary fission. You have one, you divide from two, you divide you from four, you divide you from, so binary fission, one cell divide from two, two. So rapidly, you see, at one moment you are one, at one moment you are eight. So they reproduce rapidly using what you call binary fusion. There is a difference between binary fusion when you is F U is joining, but F I fusion is splitting. So they divide by splitting. What are some of the characteristics of bacteria? Number one, they are unicellular. They are one cell thick. One cell, prokaryotic. Their nucleus is not bounded with a membrane. So pro means before, before, before karyotes. Karyo, karyo means nucleus. It means that before a true nucleus. So if you look at them, they're just, their nucleus is not surrounded by nuclear membrane. Yes. Microscopic, very small. You can see them with naked eye. They lack a nucleus, as I've explained, that they are prokaryotic, meaning that they don't have a true nucleus. Have a plasma membrane, meaning they have a cell membrane. Bacteria are classified in two groups according to the shapes, the basic shape. The one which is in form of a sphere, we call it cocci. Cocci. If there are many, cocci. If it's one, coccus, U.S. Rod. The one which is in form of a rod, we call it bacilli. If there are many. If it's one, bacillus. The one which is in form of a spiral, yes, we call it spirilla, spiral. 
and the one which is in form of a comma, we call it Vibrio, comma shaped. Vibrio, an example is Vibrio, cholera. Vibrio, yes. Cocai, cocas, if it's one. Bacillus, if there are many. Bacilla, if there are many. Spirillum, if it's one. Spirilla, if there are many. Vibrio, if it's one. Vibrios, if there are many. Cocas, you can repeat after me, class. Cocas, one. Cocai, many. Bacillus, one. Bacilli, many. Spirillum, many. No, spirillum is one. Spirilla, many. Vibrios, many. Vibrio, one. So basically, that's it. This is what I'm saying. Caucus, round shape. That's how it looks like. Bacillus. You see, it's in form of a rod. Form of a rod. Rod shaped. Bacillus. See, bacillus. One bacilli. Many. Cocci. Plural. Yes. Cocci. Yes. Many. Then spirillum. One. Spirilla. Many. And then vibrio. One. Vibrios. Many. So, those are the classes of bacteria based on their shape. Please don't forget how to classify them or if we bring this in the exam. Let's look at protista. What can you think about protista? Tell me. Okay, protista are prokaryotics. Do they have a nucleus? Yes. Is it surrounded? Yes. Therefore, they belong to eukaryotics. So, protista are eukaryotics. They have a true nucleus. These are the true cells. They are more advanced. You see, we started with the, with virus. It's not even it's not even prokaryote. It's a karyote. It's not even a cell. It's very very small. We went to bacteria. You see, they are more advanced. Then now, compared to the viruses. Now we are on the protista. Now this one, they have a true cell. So you see we are advancing. Yes, the cell structure. Have a true nucleus, are typically divided into three categories, including, number one, animal-like protista. These are protista which look like animal. They have animal characteristics. Two, plant-like protista. They look like plants. They have characteristics of plants. Maybe they are green. Three, fungus-like protista. These are fungus. Like maybe they can cause organisms to decompose. So we call them fungus-like. They're not fungus. They're not animals. They're not plants. But they're plant-like, animal-like, and fungus-like protista. Protista vary in... How they move, which can range from Syria. Syria, Syria are simple structure, if, if that's the cell. They're just short like that. They beat in one direction. They just beat in one direction. Flagellum, flagellum means they have a tail. Yes, if they have a tail like this, that's a flagellum, like a sperm. Yes. Oh, pseudo horia. Horia comes from the word foot. Pseudo means false. False foot. Pseudo horia. False foot. Pseudo horia. Flagellum is a long tail. Syria is a short, short, short. And in most cases, Syria are many. They're like your hair when you have just cut. They just beat in one direction. Flagellum beats in both directions. Yes, the same way you see maybe a fish. Yeah, it has a tail. 
but it beats in both directions. And then pseudopodia, they have a false foot. A false foot is a foot, but not a real foot. We just call it foot because it is used to move. What are some of the characteristics of protista? They are actually aquatic. They live in water, present in soil. You can find them in soil or in areas with moisture. So it means that they require wet environment, not dry area. You can find protista in a desert because there no moisture, not even aquatic environment. Most protista or protists species are unicellular. However, they are unicellular. Most of them, one cell, one cell organism. However, some of them, few of them are multicellular. You see now we are from simple. No? Now we have started to have some few which are multicellular. Now the next one, you have to expect it to have more multicellular. They are eukaryotic meaning they have a true nucleus or the nucleus is nuclear. The nucleus is bounded. They have bounded organelles. They may be autotrophic or heterotrophic, meaning that they can manufacture their own food or they can feed on other organisms. If they can manufacture their own food, therefore it means that they are green in color. They can trap sunlight or they can't. They're going to be health drops. Symbiosis. This is the relationship between the, the organisms. Observed in members of the class seaweed. For example, an example is a seaweed. Is, how is this, this symbiosis? Both are benefiting. So it's mutualistic. Is provide, provide the seaweed provides otters. The otters protection and in turn, the otters eat the seaweed archins or richens that feed on the seaweed. So the archins, they feed on seaweed. Therefore, what they do? They, 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 they. What they do, the otters, they try to feed on these archins which feed on seaweed. And then the seaweed provide protection to the what the otters so that they are not being taken away or they are not being taken away by the predators yes so this is it's a kind of relationship which benefits both yes it benefits what both parasitism is also another observed is observed in protists species like trypanosoma Trypanosoma, these are uh, is a, a protista which causes sleeping sickness. It used to be in Africa a lot. Trypanosoma, trypanosomiasis. Yeah. So, protista, the disease which is you sleep. Yeah, you sleep. <laughs> I'm not saying that if you always don't sleep, you have played Panasonic. No. Keep drinking energy drinks so that you wake up or coffee. Yeah. Does it mean that you have tried Panasoma? Mm -hmm. Go to the doctor. Doctor will tell you. Uh, protozoan can cause sleeping sickness. So this trypanosoma, this trypanosoma. Can, is a protozoan that can cause sleeping sickness in humans. Yes. So it is a parasite. Protista exhibit uh, uh, locomotion through cilia. They have cilia, as I explained, the cilia short. And then flagellum, if there are many, flagella, the long tail. Yes. A few organisms belong to kingdom protista, or organisms that belong to kingdom protista, have pseudopodia. A pseudo, as I say that, polia means foot. Pseudo means false, false foot. That help them to move. Yes, so they help them to 
no. Protists are reproduced by asexual reproduction. However, sexual reproduction occurs, but very rarely. Under the uh, harsh conditions, that's when you can have sexual reproduction. But in most cases, it, it, it happens by asexual reproduction. What are some of the groups of the protista? Number one. Phyloplanktons, plant-like protista. These are, as we say, that you have plant-like protista, fungi-like protista. Yes. So, like phyloplanktons, phyloplanktons are examples. Phyloplanktons. These are plant which are found in water. Yes, water. And then these are autotrophs. Autotrophs means that they can manufacture their own food. Number two, zooplanktons. Zoo means animal. Yes, so animals, these are animal-like protista. Because they're animals, they are not green in color, therefore they are heterotrophs. They feed on other organisms. And this one, they can move because they're animals. That's why we say that they're animal-like protista. They're not animals, but they have the characteristics of animals. Therefore, they're animal-like protista. Fungi-like protista. These are also heterotrophs because they are fungi, fungi, they don't, they are not green in color. They have cells with a small, with a cell wall and reproduce by forming spores. Spores could be the, 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 the small structures. They could be gametes for uh, these organisms, could be the sperms and ova. Yeah, in this case, I think when I say that, you'll be able to understand. Yes, spores. Yes, they are used. So they are being blown away by water or by air. And then when they reach there, they germinate. Yes. Examples of protista is amoeba. Amo. Amo means shapeless. We call it amoeba because it doesn't have a shape. It keeps on changing. Yes. Uglena. We saw it with a long tail. Paramecium, paramecium, this one, they are free living organisms, organisms which don't, they are found in that um, water, but is a free living organism, doesn't have any problem to a human. Yeah, dear, this one is the one which is dangerous. It, it causes diseases, this one. Yeah, it's also an example. And then diatoms, these are found in, 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 in wet environment. environment. Look at this. Okay, plasmodium, plasmodium, is the one which cause which cause uh, malaria. It's not a mosquito which causes malaria. No, mosquito is a vector. It transports malaria. Malaria um, causing organ, which is plasmodium. Yes. So here is an example of amoeba. It is shapeless. You look at it like this at this time. After you turn, when you come back, it's different shape. So. This is amoeba, this is a uglena, uglena, yes. And then this is the uh, paramecium, that's how it looks like. And then this is the idea, which it looks like this. Yeah, among all these, these are free living organisms, is this one which is dangerous, the idea. Lastly, but not the least, let's look at uh, fungi. Fungi are eukaryotic organisms that include microorganisms. Microorganisms, yes, such as yeast, molds, and mushrooms. Yeast, you know, even when you are baking, you know, molds, bread mold, mushrooms, you know, mushrooms. So those are some of examples of fungi. Fungi are eukaryotic, obvious, because we have seen that the other one is not even eukaryotic, not even prokaryotic, is eukaryotic, is just it's not your cell, that's a virus. When you keep on bacteria is prokaryotic, then when you come to protist, I said eukaryotic, definitely the next one, fungi is more advanced than the pro protista. Therefore, it is prokaryotic. Sorry, is eukaryotic. So it means that they have a nucleus with the uh the perfect shape, or the nucleus is surrounded with the the membrane, which you call the nuclear 
membrane. Then we have they are heterotrophs, meaning that they cannot manufacture their own food because they lack chlorophyll. They feed on other organisms. Fungi are saprophytic, meaning that they live off dead organic matter, meaning that they, they decompose the organisms. Yeah, these are some of the decomposers. If they ask you to give examples of decomposers, you give fungi, you give bacteria. Those are the major decomposers uh, we know. Or parasitic, meaning that they can cause diseases. They can cause what? Diseases. Some are pathogenic, meaning that they cause diseases or they carry diseases. And then the body of multi uh, the body of the multicellular fungi are made up of threads called hyphae. Yes, they have seen the body is you have to have hyphae and then it keeps on repeating and then it forms uh, what you call fungi. And the hyphae is, could be high hyphae together form what you call the mycelium. Mycelia, if it's many, mycelium, if it is one, it's like a stem like. Yes, it's not a stem, because it's not a plant. Yes. The hyphae are often multinucleated. It means that you have more than one nucleus. More than one nucleus. It means that they are multinucleated. Yes. Those who want to join our class, click on that join button ask your parent to pay for you that simple amount then you get maximum help from our channel in different subjects basically maths physical science life science geography yes and more subjects are coming like accounting, economics, all those subjects are coming, yes. So we have two classes. We have the first class where you just get material and stuff, and then we have the second class where you have to be with the teacher in contact. And uh, not that expensive, less than 200 per month. Okay, structure of the mold or bread mold. This is bread mold. This one is of bread mold. Yes. Here is an example. Okay, it depends on an example. Here is a structure of a bread mold. Spirulum. Um, this is a, a ball which has pores. It bursts. When it bursts, it raises these pores. That's why it's called. Spora ngiam. Spora. From the word spora. Sporangium. Sporangium. Spor. Don't go to the exam without knowing this. Ne? Then sporangiospora is the stem. Could be the stem. Then we have what called the hyphae. You see, it is multinucleated. Yes. And then you have the rhizoids. Rhizoids. They are not roots. They are root like. They are root like. Therefore, we can call this a thallus. Yes. So this is a bread mold we are talking about. Check how it looks like. But you know this bread, what happens to the bread when you eat it, you keep it in the fridge for a long time. Yeah, that's what we are talking about. It's a bread mold. So I'm going to stop here. When I come back, I will start with roles of virus, bacteria, protista, fungi in maintaining the balance in environment. Do virus have an advantage to us? Yes. Do bacteria have an advantage to us? Yes. Do they cause diseases? Yes. So meaning that if a person is sick, it is important to us. Yes, it's important. Imagine everyone is here and there is no death. What will happen? Okay, we'll discuss about that when we come back in our next class. Keep in touch. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you very much for attending.
drop your questions in the comment below. Get the, get the link for more resources and also join our class by clicking join. Take the second one. It's most preferred. Why? Because you get maximum attention from us. And then we see that you get distinctions. Thank you very much.